Hey everybody, today we are going to learn how to make a specular map in Autodesk Maya and Photoshop. So specular maps are extremely simple to make. Uh, we're going to start by taking a polygon plane and we're going to keep it in a square format. Uh, we're mainly doing this because I assume by the time you make specular maps, you're going to understand the UV process and understand that you need to have all your UVs laid out before you actually attempt the texturing process. So we're keeping it square because we're gonna do a tileable texture and we're gonna make uh, it have different diversities of shininess. Now we are dealing with specularity, which means shininess. So the standard Lambert One shader does not have specular attributes. The shaders that do have specular attributes in Maya are your Fong, Fong E, your anastropic and your blend shader. So we're gonna go ahead and apply a blend shader to Maya so we can see it. There we go. So you can see now we have specular attributes. Uh, we have a little highlight on our shader sphere and we can change all sorts of cool things. But before we do that, let's go ahead and apply a color to this so we can see what we're working with. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to apply a file to the color of the blend. I'm gonna turn off my filter type. I don't want any blurring. And I'm gonna to navigate to my pattern. So let's see, this is a different one. Pattern 15, and we'll use the diffuse and hit six on our keyboard, and there it is. Now, it's a really cool texture, uh, but it's super, super overly shiny. Now, what if I only want certain parts of this texture to be shiny? Well, to do that, I need to mask out different areas of specularity. So by default, I can control the complete specularity of the object, but I can't control individual parts. So let's go ahead and use Photoshop to mask out this area. So to do this, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and open my specular map in Photoshop, which I already have open, and Specular maps are really easy. They act just like masks act in Photoshop. So black conceals, white reveals. So one of the cool tricks that I tend to use, if black conceals and white reveals, I go ahead and grab a channel. So I'm gonna duplicate this channel and I'm gonna make a copy of it. And actually I don't even need to do it that way. Let me undo that real quick. I'm gonna just Command A to select all, or you can do select all. I'm going to then copy and go to my layers now, hit RGB, go to my layers, hit new, and paste. And what this does is immediately gives me some black, white, and gray values for my specular map. So if I were to control I, I could invert, I could change colors, I can actually do a lot of things with this. So I'm gonna play around with this a little bit and see what we can get. White would be the most shiny that we can get in a scene. Black would be no shininess whatsoever, and different shades of gray, depending on what end of the spectrum they fall on, really depend on, uh, that would depend on the level of shininess as well. So if I double click this, and I kind of start playing around with some certain areas here, I can kind of look and say, okay, I have this black and white image, I could get my magic wand tool, and I could select certain areas, I could use my marquee tool. So let's say we want this area in the middle to be completely shiny. We can go ahead and do that. We could kind of select that area. And we'll just expand this. And there we go. So we can select this area and maybe we fill that with white. So I'll hit Alt Delete. Maybe we can do the same with these other areas. So I'll use my lasso tool. You could use your pen tool here, but I'm gonna just do this really roughly for demo's sake. And we're gonna mask out these areas. We're gonna make these completely shiny. So that's why we're filling them with white. Everything that's not shiny will not be white. Now this is a good job for again, like your shape tools and things like that. But overall, if we do this correctly, fill that with white, maybe duplicate this using the Alt key. So hit V for the Move tool and duplicate it and then rotate it. 
all these are relatively the same. So we're going to just kind of nudge them in place, so to speak. And we can create a pretty cool effect. So what's happening is every area that's white is going to be shiny. Now, at this point, I could go and say, OK, I, I like this. Everything's working out fine. Um, maybe I want this area in the middle to be black. So I don't want shininess. So I'm going to create my sphere here, or sphere of working in 3D too much here, my circle. And we're going to go ahead and kind of nudge that down a little bit. May need to get it a little bigger. But let's go ahead and fill this with black. And then when we have it open, the great thing is you can just kind of stretch it. Specular maps aren't an exact science. Um, it's not as detailed as a color map in a sense. Um, what we can do though is we can kind of fudge some of the uh, edges here. So there we go. So I can continue to make these, um, these little shapes around here. Let me open this back up and let's hit Command J and duplicate them and continue to, actually what we can do is flip it, can't we? So Command T flip vertically. And again, I'm just doing this. This is a little more complex of a shape, but I want to show you kind of a cool result. And we'll grab this one and hit Command T. Actually, let's duplicate it with Command J, then Command T. There we go. And let's flip it vertically or horizontally, I should say. There we go. Nudge it into place. Hit enter, and you know, knowing your Photoshop shortcuts is a huge thing. If you do not know those, learn them. They're going to be really, really helpful. Uh, at this point, I can click on this, and I could do a lot of things with this. What I like to typically do is uh, I usually smooth my selection a little bit because I know I did this a little bit weird. So I'll go ahead and smooth. I can also do a um, select and mask as well and that will give me kind of an interactive um, con kind of shift edge button and things like that so I can play around a little bit with that um, where I see fit I don't really need it in this case but um, overall that's fine it's a little choppy but we'll live okay so I'll put this underneath it we'll keep the other other elements gray and let's go ahead and save this let's just save it as a JPEG and we'll call it specular map new and let's hit save and okay now where do you put this specular map well this is going to mask our uh, specular elements as you can see going back to Maya everything is shiny so where I'm going to take this is I'm going to go to specular color and hit the checkerboard box I'm going to load a bitmap file hit the yellow folder and here we have our specular map new and we're going to put that in now at first glance I'll turn off my filtering at first glance it doesn't look that good but if you notice the highlights no longer hitting this area is it it's kind of only staying within the green area and where you see it goes out to the kind of metal area on the outside it's a little less intense so you can even see areas, I'll point out my own mistakes, but you can see areas where I should have painted a little bit more here. I must have covered these up because they're not showing up. So now I have a very um, clear kind of idea of where my shininess is. So I can go ahead and adjust this even further. I could turn the specular roll off down a little bit. I could turn the eccentricity down as well to get a sharper kind of highlight. And now you can see that not all the areas are completely lit. And again, when I start dealing with uh, lighting and things, this really will help. But check that out. You notice that the complete black area of this kind of brown part is not at all affected by the shininess. So you can do a really a lot of cool things with your maps and it really brings your maps alive.
Again, if we were to go and throw uh, this, this particular seamless texture came with a normal map, so let's throw that on. Uh, in, in conjunction with the normal map, if we throw that on as well, we can start getting some pretty cool lighting effects in here, which are not too shabby. So let's go back here and just kind of adjust the settings a little bit and so now you can see we're getting a little bit more depth from the scene so pretty cool pretty awesome stuff anyway that's how you make a specular map so again a specular map is a map that you plug into your specular color using a specular shader which is either a blin a fong a fong e or anastropic and you can also plug these in, to, in game engines like Unity and Unreal. There'll be spots for them. You may see them referred to as metallic or roughness maps. But essentially all it is is black conceal shininess and white reveals. And the different shades of gray are different levels of shininess. So hopefully this helped you all. And um, you guys, I look forward to seeing these specular maps applied to your models to show a real diversity of material and specularity throughout. All right, guys, I'll catch you in the next lesson.